Satan's act enemy, listen carefully, is not God. God is his creator. And even in his fallen state, he will acknowledge God. Satan's act enemy is man. Now, let me wrap up as we pray. What does Satan really want? What has been his drive for all these probably millions of years and he's not rested? Why does Satan want your family? Listen carefully. Why does Satan want your health? Why is he afflicting you with sickness? Why does Satan want to destroy the ministry, the man of God? Why is he destroying your business? It's an old story. And if you do not know what is Satan's motivation, you will be shadow boxing around issues, not knowing that the issues predate you. There are two things that Satan is looking for. And this is the basis for the entire study of demonology and deliverance. Two things. Number one, dominion. Number two, transgenerational allegiance this is all satan is looking for his obsession for dominion and number two his obsession for transgenerational allegiance this is what birthed the concept of witchcraft altars patterns everything you see today that destroys people destroys family is a structure driving that goal dominion and allegiance matthew chapter 4 Satan's obsession for dominion and Satan's obsession for allegiance was demonstrated in the very temptation of Satan with Jesus. Please look up. Are we Bible students? Then was Jesus led up out of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of who? The devil. Now, um, let's go to verse 8. Verse 8, quickly please. Verse 8. Again, this was the third temptation. The devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. What did the devil show him? The, all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Say dominion. Scripture is revealing to us now Satan's obsession. He said, all these things I will give thee. Please go back to verse. Yes, and the glories of them. Now verse 9. All these things I will give you. If you will do what? And dominion and allegiance. That's it. Satan can suddenly become a giver if you satisfy that condition. That means I don't need this. Keep that scripture, please. Verse 9. I don't need the money. Look up, please, believers. I don't need your health. I don't need your political position. I don't need your prosperity. I don't need your ministry. I don't need longevity in your family. It's none of my business. There is one thing I need. I need you to fall down and worship. Nebuchadnezzar. When you hear the sound of the trumpet and everything, fall down and worship. The image of the beast, fall down and worship. How could a man be so driven by this agenda? Can I tell you this? You can easily know who is under the influence of Satan by their obsession for these two things. Their obsession for control, not just dominion, control, and their obsession for human worship is a classic character of Satan. This is all that Satan looks for. Please listen to me. And do you know what? Satan hates you today because of one thing God gave you. That image, and he declared that dominion mandate and compelled creation to answer you. Now you have become the arch enemy of Satan. Look up, please. If Satan, if God suddenly removes his image from man and give it to stones, you will beg Satan, you will not get his attention. He will not need you again. Because it's not you he's looking for. What is man that thou art mindful of? Psalm 8. Let's wrap up. Psalm 8 verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has said thy glory? Help those under the anointing. We're about to pray. I sense a very strong anointing here. Verse 2. He says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemies, that, that thou mightest kill the enemy and the avenger. Now, his contemplations, verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, verse 4. What is man? What is the psalmist had to sit down and wonder, Lord, what is man that you did not? Couldn't you have just used Satan? Couldn't you have just used the archangels? You left all of them and you came to bring another humanoid species. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 5 
for you have made him a little lower than angels the word there is elohim not angelio elohim you have made him a little lower than yourself in ranking you have crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 thou hast made him to have over what the works of thy hands and you have put all things all things hold on he didn't say all things on earth no all things all things aside from yourself it was adumbrated in the honor of joseph he said joseph i now promote you in everything will be under you it is only on the throne you will be above me this is what was given to him that was what the devil was fighting so that journey from his brothers to potiphar's wife to everything was fighting that position is the same thing that happened to esther the same thing that happened to mordecai these are all adumbrations of what god did to man thou hast made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet verse seven okay so you, you, that, let's just leave verse 6. When you go back and see what Paul speaks to the Hebrew churches, he says, in doing so, you did not leave anything that was under his feet. You find that in Hebrews chapter 2. That you did not leave anything out that was not under his feet. Can I tell you this? Please look up. Man, not God, is Satan's arch enemy. Believing that God is Satan's arch enemy is an insult. No. Because even when they were fighting for the body of Moses, you see that now. You see how powerful this ranking is. Because as at the time Satan was fighting with Michael over the body of Moses, Satan was fighting as the prince of this world. He had collected that authority and Michael had to respect him. So he could not say, I rebuke you. He said, the Lord, the authority that is higher than man, the only authority higher than man, I use that authority to rebuke you. Because if Satan had told, if, if Michael had told Satan, I rebuke you, it would be a compromise of the order. When God exalted man, he was exalted even above the cherubs, above every other thing. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand. Where are you seated? Far above. Thrones, dominions, every name that is named. You have to understand and believe what I'm teaching you. It's not about the all time your village. Your grandfather was an innocent man who did he just entered the middle of an old story. So Satan created systems to make sure there is transgenerational allegiance. They will stop rain and punish men who do not know, neither will they understand. So they will go to Satan and say, let rain come and let our children eat. Say, here is the agreement. I will send the rain. Remember, he's a giver. Suddenly, if he will get dominion and allegiance. So the fathers on behalf of the land will say, Satan, hunger is killing us. Through those mediums, we will serve you. They call him different names, but he's the same person. Okay, we will give you a deity. Worship this deity. And the fathers came, grandfathers will worship the deity. And for as long as they worship the deity, he will use the authority of man to bring rain. The authority of man is what Satan uses to bring rain. When people are sick, when he finds out that people are not, that allegiance is compromising, there will be a widespread problem within the land. And the elders will run back. And the, the priest or whatever medium can say, I'm hungry. You who are eating, I'm not eating. What do you want, sir? Make sure your children come and worship me. And you innocently, they give back to you. You are shouting before you even know left and right. They made incisions on your body and made covenants. And Satan says, that's right. And then now, you just stand before Jesus and say, I receive you as my lord and satan says what did you say do you know what that means that means you are saying from me oh, everything that comes from me will no longer serve you and satan says you have drawn the line everything that is a threat to his allegiance he will fight it through men he will fight it through systems can i tell you this whether you are yoruba whether you are Igbo, whether you are south south whether you are the Caribbeans, you are Northern, you are Spanish, I don't care what region. This story has brought all of us into one singular basket. This is what Satan wants. He showed us what he wants. And dead Jesus, don't think he will be afraid of you. He said, Jesus, there is no need to go through all this rigor. 
just bow. Let me tell you, something happens to Satan when you worship. Are you seeing what happens when you worship? Are you seeing why worship is powerful? So he looks at you going down to your knees and says, for who now? And you begin to call his name, Jesus. And he will say, you know what? Afflict this man in a way that will make Jesus not look like Savior. And when the affliction gets too much, somebody will tell you there's somebody in the village. And you will go and sit down and say, I knew he was going to come. Hear me? I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. Because truly, your freedom has come. Can I tell you this? This is why songs that talk about surrender are so powerful. Because in doing that, it is like it's, it's, it's an insult. Satan says for millions of years, can I tell you this? Do you know Satan actually believes that the day is going to come when he will compel the entire creation to come under his lordship? He really does. It is only you who does not believe it. Satan is firing on all four cylinders. He still believes. He believes that all your family will serve him. Forget that you are... So when he sees you, listen, every battle that you read in this Bible came as a result of Satan's perceiving it as a threat to his agenda. When he killed children, it was not about children. He perceived they were saviors in the children. When Satan causes barrenness today, Satan does not need children. Satan, he... He can peep through the window of prophecy and hear when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and say, Madam, a prophet is going to come through your womb. And he knows that that prophet will break a 150-year-old idol practice. He will bring the barrenness of Zechariah and Elizabeth was not about barrenness. It was about John who will ordain Jesus, who will save the world. God is giving us intelligence. Apostle, I am a sincere person. I don't steal, I don't kill. Yet there is an attack on my business. Let me tell you, interpret it now from the lens of who Satan is. Interpret everything that happens in your life from the lens of who Satan is. Not the lens of the village you are coming from. That's too small. Not the lens of the... mean. It's not about you and your boss. From a bigger picture, your boss has no business with that. He's only an available vessel. Everything Satan will use to frustrate you until he brings you to a point of dominion and transgenerational allegiance. I know this. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Satan can give you the whole world, but he needs something. Your soul. I'm not wasting your time. I apologize. I know our time is gone. We're going to pray. But please hear me. Now you can go back home and know that it's not about the problem that happened in your family. It's not about what happened with your grandfather at all. It's not even about what is happening between your father and your mother. It's not about what is happening with your education. Satan does not need visas. No. It's not about your finances. He has seen that your finances will do something that will threaten that agenda. He will attack it with everything he has. Please look up. My dear one, it is not about marriage and children. It is because he has seen that in it. Satan does not attack anything for itself. He verifies. Is there a component in your lifting? Oh, so you now become governor or you become head of parliament and in it, Many people will receive scholarships to go to good schools. And there is a chapel there. They will hear a man of God. They will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will not win that election. He will fight you. What does Satan want? I will be like the Most High. I desire it. Everywhere you see Satan, he's obsessed with his image being erected and men bowing to the image. He does not want animals. When he came upon Nebuchadnezzar, he said, let a 90 feet stature be built. Ah! But only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary the devil, like a roaring lion, seeking for whom 
he may devour. He said, do not let Satan take an advantage of you, for we are not ignorant that there is an agenda. When that agenda was in place, your village was not even your village. Your nation was not even your nation. There is an old story about an old serpent, an old agenda. Not only a shoe will reign forever. To your kingdom there'll be no end. Only a shoe will reign forever. Listen, please don't miss any of this series. This is just an introduction. I will be sharing with you in the course of this series some of my encounters with the dark world and you will marvel and wonder where genuine spiritual authority comes from. Can I tell you, this teaching you see and this series is one of the greatest threats of Satan because the power of darkness is the absence of light. When light comes, now you are gaining perspective. You can go back and say, Mama, this our fight is not about two of us. Now I know. This fight is not about you at all. This ten-year-old fight is not about you. I have found out in the volume of the books that there is something about my destiny. Man of God, hear me. Find comfort. Why is Satan attacking my ministry? I will tell you why. It is not because of where you come from. Where you come from is just the obvious answer, not the right one. I can tell you. Some of you now begin to look at your life and see all the happenings and see that that roaring lion has been tracing you and saying till now you have not gone down. Do not cry about all the stories of pain in your life. Now God is interpreting the writings on the wall. The disappointment, the shame. He fought your marriage. He fought your children. You lost your child. You lost everything. And you are wondering, to what end is this? Now I bring you the word of the Lord. He wants dominion and he wants transgenerational allegiance. If you will fall down and worship me, that business I will give it to you. Can I tell you this? Look up please. Unfortunately, painfully unfortunately, there are people today who could not stand because they do not know these truths. And they do not have the weapons of victory. They said, Satan, I can't go through this. I will go back to you. And they had that agreement. They are some of the celebrities we celebrate around the world today. They know what they did. You don't know it, but they know. That is why in spite of their fame, there is no joy. They already know their doom is defined. That's why the money does not prosper them. That's why in the, you see how miserable, respectfully speaking, some of their lives become. In the midst of all the glamour. Because they know that there is a covenant. Please hear me. Some of you right now, Satan is about to tempt you. And he's using financial issues. He's using marital issues. He's using health issues. And they have called you from the village. Come back. Remember what we said. We will bath you near the river. And that's it. Just bath him. No. It's not about the water. A river does not hurt people. There is an allegiance. Please hear me. Let me encourage someone as we pray. For the sake of those depending on you, don't give up. Don't give up. Some of you are crying. Listen to me, I'm very serious. For the sake of your family members, if you give up, who else will help them? Are you not seeing their state? That's why God sent you to Koinonia here. For those of you following, that's why He said, A read out of fire. Only a shoe, you reign forever. To your kingdom, there'll be no end. Only a shoe, will reign forever. To your kingdom, Please look at me. What if Rain had Bonke gave up? What if T.L. Osborne gave up? What if Billy Graham gave up? Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Can I tell you this? Please look at me, brothers and sisters. 
this is a word from the Lord. This is not just a deliverance series. You need to go back home and listen to this thing again. Especially this part. What is Satan really looking for? You are wrong if you think it's your marriage. You are wrong if you think it's your health. What is it about the cancer and the fibroid and whatever the genotype issue? No. None of those things. There is something he's looking for. Please look up. We're wrapping up. Please look up. In our nation here and many parts of Africa, when kidnappers or some of these evil people are looking for people, what they do is they try to look for somebody or something dear to you. Is that true? They catch your child or they catch whoever. And then sometimes they will now make you to hear the voice of your child. And when your child that you gave birth to says, Daddy, please don't leave me like this. You can give up that business and say, what is business if my child is in the hand of someone? And all of a sudden, you bring your everything. So what Satan did was he studied everything dear to you. He found out your assignment is dear to you. Your family is dear to you. Your business is dear to you. And he fashioned an attack. Hear me? Now that it seems like he's collected the business, he's strangling the business like the voice of that child and making you hear it. Daddy, will you leave this vision like this? Daddy, is this how this family will be without a child? And before you know it, they say there is somebody. It's not exactly evil, but we will go to the village. He said we should bring a chicken. We should bring one granite oil. We should bring palm oil. We should bring a knife and bring some kinds of things. Some of you, God brought this message to help you because you're on your way going there now. Be careful. Can I tell you this? Desperation is Satan's moment. The moment Satan finds a desperate individual, here he comes. I spoke to you 10 years ago. You didn't listen. 10 years later, are you willing? But only a shoe will reign forever. To your kingdom, two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Please pray it from the depth of your heart. Shout this loud after me, everybody. Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I come by the blood of the Lamb. And I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me, fashioned against my destiny, shall prosper. Lift your voice and begin to pray. No weapon. No weapon against my health. No weapon against the work of the Lord committed to me. No weapon. Someone pray. No weapon against my children. No weapon. Are you praying? Against my job, my career, my spiritual life. Every spirit around your life is on assignment. The spirit of death is on assignment. The spirit of infirmity is on assignment. The spirit of failure is on assignment. They don't come on their own. They are sent by an adversary. Hallelujah. I know we've not begun to discuss deliverance proper. But let me use one scripture and we pray. Now thanks be to God. Which always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God. Can I tell you this? Believe me when I tell you. That he who the son sets free. Is free indeed. Amplified says is really and unquestionably free. Free from curses, free from yokes, bondages of darkness. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, I dissociate myself from ancestry 
I dissociate myself from covenants. I dissociate myself from activities of bloodline and inheritance. I declare that I have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every nation. I am seated with Christ. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Pray. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory. Victory in Jesus Christ. Victory by the blood. Victory over curses. Victory over altars. Victory over yokes. Victory over activities of ancestry. Victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of Jesse is worthy. And I looked upon the throne and I saw as it were a lamb that had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God. My background does not have to be a disadvantage over me. Because my grandfather was a herbalist, my grandmother was a herbalist, I don't have to suffer the consequences of yesterday. There is a bailout system for me. Because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession.